Today's video is about mixing paint to get the colors you need for the portrait you're working on. This one's for you, Deborah. The first thing I like to do is analyze my reference material in Photoshop. I'll use the color picker to hover over an area, specifically starting with the lights, and then I'll hover over the areas that look like the mid value and put that in the middle of my side palette here. And then I'll hover over the dark areas and put that at the top of my white palette to the side and you'll see that I have three piles of values. The lights, the middles, and the darks. If you don't want to use Photoshop for this step, you could just analyze these light, middle, and dark areas with your mind's eye. I'm very visual though, so doing it this way really helps me get ready to set up my actual painting palette. Another thing that's helped has been making color charts. This is a great way to get to know the paints that you're using on your palette. Go ahead and make different variations of skin tones like I've done here by mixing different reds with different blues and different yellows. And here's the Zorn palette color chart. So Zorn palette is four colors. There's white, yellow, red, and black. And you can mix a mini variety of colors as you see here from the small limited palette. All right, step number two. The first thing I do before I touch my paint is I look at my reference, the area I'm going to mix the color for, and I ask myself, is this color more red, blue, or yellow? I've put together some colors for us to mix together using the Zorn palette. I've located colors that are very similar to the colors we'll be mixing on my color chart. This is a great way and a quick way to know where to begin mixing your paint. If you want to learn how to do the color charts, there's an, uh, instructions in the book A La Prima 2 written by Richard Schmidt. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a great resource for learning how to do color charts. So the first group of colors we're going to mix will be the light and the mid value colors and these will be our darks. And I've put here a pure black spot just to have for comparison. It's always great to have pure white and pure black so you can see where your color lies. Welcome to my channel, Shelly J. Cox. Come along with me on my art journey. Okay, we're gonna mix some skin tones. We have one, two, and three different colors that we're going to mix. So I'm using the Zorn palette. I've got titanium white, yellow ochre. I'm using vermilion for the red and ivory black. So out of those four colors, we're going to be able to mix these three. I'm gonna start with this one in the middle, and number two. So the first thing I'm gonna ask myself is, is it more red, is it more yellow, or is it more blue? It's gotta be one of the three primary colors as a base to what we've got started here. And my answer would be red. I hope that was your answer too. <laughs> so we'll take a little red to start and I'm gonna mix number two first. So it's definitely, so you see the pure red here. It's definitely more yellow than this pure red, so let's add some yellow. And there we go, we're gonna kind of do equal amounts. Just push those two colors together. Which you've probably realized that was going to give us an orange, which it did. So looking at that color next to the color we want to do, it's actually pretty close when you see it that way, but it's still a little too saturated. So when a color is too saturated, you want to add its complementary color. So if you're looking at a color wheel, you'll see that the complementary color, which is directly from the opposite side on the color wheel, so it would be over here, it'll be blue. And in the Zorn palette, the black acts as our blue. So it doesn't take a lot because the value of the number two is still pretty light. So let's put a touch of black into our mixture. Sorry, my stand's a little wobbly. And that will knock down some of that intense color that we had initially. So it's very close to the same orangey red color, but less intense. So let's get a good flat bit of that on our diamond head palette knife. So what we've ended up here 
with is color number three. Look how perfect that is. So if we put a little of that, it's still a little dark though for color number three, but pretty darn close. But it's definitely too dark for color number two. So let's lighten that up. We could lighten it up by adding a touch more yellow, but I don't want to lose the red, the level of red that we've found. So I'm going to add a touch of white. And when I'm adding white to my colors, I like to come onto the edge here so as not to lighten up the whole pile all at once. So now we have this bottom part that we lightened and we can compare it to our initial color this way. So I can see exactly how much I've lightened it. So let's look at that. And there is color number two. So it looks a little bit dark there. So let's see. We add a little touch more of white. What will happen there? There you go. Color number two. Nailed it. So with this initial pile we had for color number three, it looks like it was still just a little bit dark. So let's just take a tad of this lighter bit and add that right here. And let's see. It's still a little bit dark. So let's add some more of this light color in. I think too, it could use a touch more of black seems a little bit saturated. So just the tiniest bit. See the beauty of that is if we've taken it too far, which I believe we have, we have this original bit here, which we can add back in. And there we go. And maybe give it a little bit of this just to lighten it up a touch. I like to use other lighter colors that I've already created on my palette to lighten the darker colors rather than dipping into that white automatically. So that's pretty darn close. This is photo paper, so it's reacting weird with the paint, but once it dries, I mean, we nailed that one perfectly. This one looks like I want to bring a bit more of this orange color back into it. I think if this were on canvas, it would have been better. But I'd say that is it. Now let's mix up color number one. And compared to color number two, which is, I like to start with some of the color that I already did in the middle value. I'd say these two and three are mid value colors. Number one is a lighter color and that one will work. I think if we just take some of these orange colors to start and it's much, much lighter. So we'll get some white there. And as expected, that's going to give us a lighter orange color. So ask yourself this question of what you see, what we, where we just blended is the color we're trying to make more red, more blue or more yellow. Well, it's definitely not more yellow cause we're already pretty yellow. I'd say it's more red. So I'm going to grab a touch of this red here and put that at the bottom part of that pile. So we have half of our pile for comparison. And I believe that's headed in the right direction. Let's get a little bit more red. And I'm using the vermilion red 
Different reds will give you different results. But you'll still be able to mix any of these colors. Some reds are stronger than others. You may have to use a little less or a little bit more depending on what kind of red that it is. So I feel like we're headed in the right direction as far as the redness goes, but it's much darker. So something to note, when you're adding white to a color, it does help take down the color intensity. So we're gonna add white to this and then evaluate our color intensity after that. But I feel like this is pretty intense. So let's add that at the bottom here. And we'll see if this gets us to the correct value. So I think my plan is going to be to get to the correct value and then get to the correct U. Still a little dark. So. Add more white. Okay, I'd say that's the correct value. However, we're still off the U a little bit. I feel like it's a little, it needs a little bit of blue, which will be our black. So let's add a touch of the black here. Not too much, because we don't want to darken the color. So that grayed it down quite a bit. It's pretty close. I feel like it's a little touch gray. So what I want to do is grab, I don't want to grab the pure red. I'm going to grab a little bit of this color that we initially started with. So I'm going to put like that much into it. There we go. Never be afraid to dip into the piles that you've already created rather than going directly for the pure color. I think it's a little more difficult to control the pure color. Still a touch gray. Get a little bit more of this guy. There we go. He's going in. A lot of trial and error with mixing colors. As long as you understand how the primary colors function when mixed with one another, you can mix any color you want from red, yellow, and blue blue being our black for today. I could have put blue there, but I wanted to use a traditional Zorn palette to keep it easy for you to reproduce. <laughs> now maybe a touch lighter. So a scotch of white. Pretty close. Still a little dark though, look at that. So let's put some white right here on the side. I had a little bit of color left on my palette knife, so I may not even need to add anything to this pile. And it's nice that we have our colors here on a white piece of paper. It gives us a base to work from, know which way we're going. I'd say that's pretty darn close. A little of this orange color in there. I want, to, I feel that I want to grab a touch of red and it's going to be the tiniest touch. See how tiny that is? Teensy, teensy, tiny. That little tiny bit of red goes a long way. <laughs> Super duper close. 
I think if we were on a canvas, that would have nailed it. Or let's, could even combine these two just a tad right here. Sometimes I get too picky, I think. <laughs> got sort of a purpley hue, which would be red and blue. So I keep adding red and blue, which is our black, <laughs> to try and get it to be our color. So that's looking pretty good. Let's just grab a little white. that purple. Let's see now. Let's put a little bit on the palette knife and hold that up and see. I like to squint and look at it with one eye and when I do that the the values correct it disappears and I feel like the colors pretty darn close pretty darn close I feel like maybe I want to mix this in oh. okay and a touch of the red I feel like that's so close. Keep chasing it. It might just be because it's on photo paper. When it's starting to dry, it's looking better. All right. I'm going to call it. <laughs> so we've got number one, number two, and number three, all mixed from the Zorn palette of titanium white, yellow ochre, vermilion red, and ivory black. We started with the red, adding touches of the yellow ochre, and moving into number three, the tiniest touch of ivory black, and then number one, tiny bit more of ivory black and red to balance it out and get that purpley, light, light color. Now let's mix some of our darks. Okay, we're gonna mix these three darks. Um, this is a color chart that I made using the Zorn palette. I uh, had the yellow ochre. I used a bright, re bright red when I made this palette, but we have the vermilion today. They're pretty similar. Ivory black and used titanium white to lighten them. So this is a great way to understand what colors you can make from a specific palette. If you are going to work with a Zorn palette, I suggest making one of these color study charts. Um, I'll leave a link for you to look at the Alla Prima book. It, it has a great explanation of how to make color charts and it'll teach you how to do this. But once you have these charts, you can keep them. And then when it comes down to mixing colors, you can find these colors like this color is pretty similar to this one. And so I know this is made from one to one ratio of black to yellow with a trace of red. That's what this first one would be. So it gives you a great place to start mixing your colors. If you absolutely have no idea, then making these color charts will help you when you're mixing colors. So this second one, 
I say he's pretty close to this color here. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio of yellow and red with a trace of black. So I know that's a great start to get close to that. And then this very dark piece here, I'd say this is pretty good. Um, again, a one-to-one -one ratio of black to yellow, and then this has just a trace of red added. So with that in mind, let's see what we can do. All right, so I like to start with the one in the middle so I can use this lighter one as the base to build these other two off of. And we had said this one was a one-to-one -one ratio of yellow to red with a trace of black. So there's some yellow. Now we want about the same amount of red. Let's take go away a little bit of that yellow. There we go. It's not a very scientific method. I'm just eyeballing that they're pretty close in amounts and then we'll blend. Again, we're getting that orange as a good base to start with. Some artists keep orange on their palette because they know, especially when painting flesh, orange is often a base for starting flesh tones. And then adding a trace of black to that is supposed to give us the color that we need here in the middle. So black, I've got that much on my palette knife. Let's see. So we want to add that right over here so we have a little bit to compare. It's pretty heading in the right direction, I feel like. Yeah, look at that. But I think we need a little bit more. So we're going to add that much more, tiny, tiny bit. We're going to put him right here. I don't really see a difference, so let's grab a bit more. That much. Small changes are fine. You don't want your colors to get too far one way and then go too far another way. Just make little changes at a time. So you can see where we started. There's the second batch. Here's the third batch. I feel like that's pretty close. Still looks, let's see. I don't know, I think that's it. Yep, there we go. So we've got this middle color nailed. Let's work on the top color. We had said this was looking pretty close to the same beginning mixture as this, but it's got a little titanium white added in. So it was a beginning one-to-one, -one, red to yellow, touch of black, and now we're going to lighten it a scotch with some white. I think we're going to need to put some more black into it too. Because it's definitely too red and we want it to be not more yellow, but we want it to be more blue. And we know blue with red makes purple and that's the direction we need to take this. And that might have been a bit much, so let's grab some of our paint we had left over. Pull him into there. That's looking pretty close. Still a little too red. So I'm gonna grab some more of our black, which in my mind is blue. Blue and red make purple. So we're taking this in a more purple direction. It's 
getting there. Needs more. Okay. Put that in. So now we need to come down and get a more darker reddish version so you can see our color comparatively. So this color is going to have a bit more red in it. It's reddish brown. So let's start by adding the red to this pile we just made. to make a difference. <laughs> yeah, now it's much darker, so let's put this black in. The blue black. So that's going to cool it down quite a bit. So we may have to add a little more yellow, but maybe not. Now it's looking pretty good. I'm going to put more red in it. Usually in portraiture, your dark, dark colors are really warm. They have a lot of red in them. It's very typical to paint warm shadows. And that's what we want to do. I'm going to grab even a scotch more. And the cool thing with this palette, this palette's a, a mid value, like a four. So when I'm mixing, I know this value is quite a bit darker than say a four. I can see that right here on my palette. So having a mid value palette is helpful. And I would say that's it. So there you go. We've made our entire palette from these four colors. And we could proceed to paint. We have one light, we have two mid values, and we have these three darks. You could paint an entire face with just those amount of colors on your palette. Here's the actual color palette that I used to mix the paints with to paint my beautiful reference image that we started with. Notice all the secondary piles of colors that were mixed from the initial piles of colors. And here's the final painting that I did. So just know that colors can always be manipulated to do what you need them to do. If you lay down a brush stroke and you realize it's not the right color, you ask yourself these questions. Is it more red? Is it more yellow? Or is it more blue? Does it need to be less saturated? Does it need to be warmer or cooler? And then you dip into the paint colors that are going to allow you to make those specific adjustments. Go at it with no fear. You'll get there. It's just a matter of patience and trial and error. Hey, I've got a couple of free goodies for you in the description. Go make sure you grab them if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.